So I want to tell you how I got my dream car for cheap. It all started when camper van prices went through the roof. I recently got finished building a Transporter T6, which was an amazing vehicle by the way, and if you've not seen the videos on that, you should definitely check them out. It even had a coffee machine. <sighs> Don't mind me, just making a latte using the power of the fucking sun. Anyway, I finished that, and by the time I finished it, the price was extortionate. I couldn't have a vehicle sat in my driveway worth 45,000 pounds that couldn't go 150 mile an hour. <laughs> So however much I did love that van, it was time for it to go. So I sold that for £43,000. In hindsight, if I'd have kept hold of it a little bit longer, I could have probably sold it for a little bit more. But anyway, we learned. I then had intention of buying a fully working car. I didn't want to spend all my money because I knew I wanted to modify it. So I started shopping around and then someone pointed me in the direction of Corpart. Me being a Corpart novice, didn't do any research. I saw this car, didn't even really know what an Aston Martin Vantage were. At the time, I couldn't tell you the difference between a Vantage and a DB9. But anyway, I made a bid on it. I did the calculations of how much it was going to cost me in parts, roughly, and I got some advice from a local body shop. I wanted to do the majority of the work myself, so I knew I could pay a little bit more than other people because I weren't trying to make a profit on it. I just wanted to get my dream car for a little bit less than I would pay for if I were to buy it fully working. Ended up paying £27,206 for this vehicle. That was plus my membership fee, which was £100. I already made a call to a supplier before I made the bid to see if I could get a full front end of another Aston that was unfortunately a different colour, and I managed to get that for £7,000. So I managed to get the car to the workshop, which was kind of lent to me by Richard at Hamworthy Body Shop, and I started to strip the car down. It came apart much easier than I expecting. There's some very odd design features with Aston Martins and everyone should experience this at least once in a life. There's certain things that you think someone possibly couldn't overcomplicate this matter but Aston Martin somehow managed to do it. Anyway the car came apart, I went and collected my new parts and then I started reassembling it. The reassembly went together quite easily. I was quite fortunate. This car was classed as a Cat S but it wasn't actually structurally damaged. Once we remove all the parts the new parts just bolted on without any adjustment whatsoever. The bent chassis She's actually a crush cat. Richard needed the ramp to earn some money because my car was just sat on there not earning him any money. So I had to rush the car back together. But I know I were taking it back apart again in the future to get it painted. So I thought I'll put it back together. I'll drive it for a little bit just to confirm there isn't actually anything bent and the car's not crabbing down the road when I drive it. And then removed it from his workshop. Then disaster struck on the first drive, literally on my way home. I'd just left the workshop two minutes ago. I was driving down the road and I heard quite a loud crack followed by a big rattle. Now I'm not in a position to afford a new engine for this vehicle. In fact, I'm not in a position to be able to afford this vehicle. I was just very fortunate that I had a van before lockdown and the price of vans went through the roof during lockdown. I pulled over to the side of the road immediately and had a look inside and it turns out during the accident, the fan belt had taken a little bit of a hit. It had just scored the edge of the fan belt enough to mean that one tooth had ripped off and it was slapping around the engine bay, hitting everything it could find which caused a bit of an oil leak, but luckily it was just a fitting that pulled out and I could press it back in. I then got it home, I pulled the remnants of the fan belt off, leaving just five teeth left on the fan belt, and I drove this for around 2,000 miles. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'm the owner that's driven this car the most. When I got it, it had just over 10,000 miles on the clock. Now this is where I got really lucky. Most people that buy a car from Corpart lose everything that comes with a car, such as spare keys, any extras that might sit with a vehicle. Specifically in this vehicle, there's a pen that goes in the dashboard and an umbrella that goes in the boot. Everything in there is Aston Martin branded, so I don't blame the previous owner for taking that sort of stuff. But there was something that I overlooked when I was bidding on this car, and like I said, I didn't know much about Aston Martin, and this car is called an N420. And for those like me that don't know much about Aston Martins, this is a special edition Aston Martin Vantage. It's got loads of carbon fibre, and there's only 420 of them in the world. So I joined the Aston Martin N Series Owners Group, and I trolled back through past posts, and I saw the guy that crashed my car into the back of a tractor, posting about his terrible day. So I knew I needed to approach his tactically, so I sent him an inbox and asked him how he was doing. I suspected he might have the extras from my car. Now, I weren't expecting these for free because some of these extras are worth quite a lot, and I would imagine that this guy's just been seen off by the insurance company and just had to get rid of his dream car. And he might have wanted to keep these parts as a memento, just to say that he once did own this car. But after a few days of chatting, he agreed to try and source the key that he'd recently sold to his friend. These keys have got crystal on the back, and they can be recorded to other cars. They're actually quite valuable and very, very easy to break. So he managed to buy the key back of his friend, to which I offered to buy it. Now, I knew I wanted to get a crystal key because why wouldn't you want a crystal key with your Aston Martin Vantage? But the plus of this is, I could just buy a key that didn't need cord and it was already corded to my car. It was a win in two ways. One, I've now got a crystal key that's corded to my car. And two, there's not a key out there on the market that's corded to my car that I don't own. But when I met the guy, he was a lovely chap. We stopped for a coffee, we discussed the car. I even offered to let him drive the car just so he could experience the fact that I put it back together and it's all nice and straight. He politely declined, said it's my car now and I should enjoy it myself. But he had another treat for me and he had the full service history of the vehicle. And he also had the warranty and he was willing to transfer the warranty over to me so that I could use the warranty on the vehicle to claim for some of the parts what are defective on the Aston Martin, which is crazy. I've just bought a crash car from auction and now I've got warranty on it. So I came away with my new key, my service history, and now I've got warranty on my vehicle. So I went around the car and looked for a little bit. Obviously, I couldn't claim for anything that was done in the accident. Now, Aston Martin have quite a few problems that are prone on this vehicle. The head unit was broken. The rear lights had the optional extra of water. 
and the interior door cord was falling off and I got all this replaced under the warranty. But every time I see something wrong with these vehicles, I need to remind myself that these are all hand built and for something what you might deem low quality, it's character to other people. So I continued driving my two-tone car, getting funny looks from everyone and the time came, I finally needed to get it resprayed. Now it's taken me quite a while to find someone to paint this car. It turns out every time you tell someone it's an Aston Martin, they want to put extra money on that price tag to paint an Aston Martin, which I couldn't get my head around. I get that if I were buying Aston Martin specific parts, it might be more expensive, but I feel like if I were paying for a service, I needed to get a service at a reasonable price and I shouldn't pay any more to respray an Aston Martin as to what I would do for a Vauxhall Corsa. Materials might be a little bit more expensive. So I finally found a chap called Stuart and he works at SC Performance and he managed to paint my car for a super reasonable price. But first I wanted to see his work, see if it were up to the standard that I wanted for the Aston Martin. Because although I was doing this build on a budget, I have high standards and you probably saw that in my van build. So I went to see Stuart, I looked at some of his work and it was at an incredible level and a reasonable price as well. So I got booked in with Stuart. Part of the negotiation where I can record my video doing it in his workshop if he can sponsor the video and obviously I weren't going to pay him to strip down the car because I was going to do that myself so I got it a little bit cheaper than most people would because I didn't have to pay for the labour to pull the car apart so I stripped the car down again now this came apart much easier than the first time because the first time I stripped it everything was all twisted and mangled into each other so as I was pulling bolts off it seemed to be pinging everywhere I was quite surprised how much I forgot about the car already and I'm still forgetting stuff even though I spent so long working under this bonnet I pulled all the parts off that needed to be pulled off I started prepping the panels with Stuart and then we put them in the boob and Stuart sprayed them up the lights in this boob really revealed every single imperfection on these panels and for quite a lot of it Stuart had to take it right down to the bare material before he sprayed on it again. One thing we did notice is that no Aston Martin is ever the same colour. Now this is a little bit of a trick what Aston Martin do is they paint several vehicles one colour within a day and because each paint colour's got flake in it throughout the day the flake sinks towards the bottom so the latter cars will have more flake in than the earlier cars. So even though you might have the same paint colour as someone else you sit them next to each other they'll probably be slightly different and that's why it really pays to get an expert in the room because Stuart was seeing stuff that my eyes couldn't even pick up and eventually we got a perfect match and that was just his experience that did that because the stuff what we pulled from the paint cord just didn't match at all so i spent a long time with stuart probably a little bit more than i was planning once he got the paintwork finished we got the car reassembled together he helped me do this because he needed me out of his workshop i seemed to have a running theme of overstaying my welcome but before he paused stuart introduced me to his other company what he ran called titan exhaust and he said he could make me a decap for this car now i know i said i wanted to modify this car but throughout the process i've developed a level of respect for this car and i feel like it needs to be kept pure however Removing two of the four cats is definitely something I can stretch to, especially if it's gonna make it sound a bit more like the engineers planned when they designed this engine. So Stuart put down the paint gun and picked up the welder and made this absolutely beautiful cross pipe for the underside of my car. So now the paint's been done, I hope to let the paint set for a while before I got booked in with Jordan, the detailing doctor. Now Jordan specialised in polishing paint. This is something normally that Stuart would do after he paints the car. But when Jordan saw that I had this project on the go, he reached out to me straight away and he wanted to do this. So I told Stuart to leave it alone. Not only did that save me a bit of money with Stuart, but Jordan's prices are reasonable as well. Andy owed me a bit of a favour. So I drove my car to the detailing doctor, we got it in his workshop and we started flat polishing the life out of this car. I got Stuart to put extra layers of clear coat on it so Jordan could have a bit of fun and get that glass finish what Aston Martins deserved. Now we didn't remove too much of the clear coat but what he did have to do is correct some of Aston Martins work to match the standard that Stuart had just painted. Now there's just one final touch I need to do and I need to get that badge on the front. For so long I've not had the badge on the front at all. This is just a short video but it stretched out over five months for me and I wanted to modernise it a little bit and the new Aston Martins have got black badges and I would really like a new Aston Martin but I can't afford a new Aston Martin. I can only afford an old crashed Aston Martin. So I bought these black badges for my car and placed them on. I've kept the original badges, so if I ever want to sell it, it can be returned to original standard. Now, for those that are interested, you want to know how much I spent on this. The total bill was £36,306. That's not including fuel or my time. But believe it or not, this is cheaper to insure and tax than my camper van worth. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you want to see stuff like this in more detail, then check out my YouTube channel, because I made this a nine-part series. And for those already subscribed, thanks for being here, because I never would have done this project without my YouTube following. I've made some great friends, learned some great skills, and now I've got my dream car at the end of it. Keep your eyes peeled for the next project, because it's coming soon.